Good morning, church. This is the part of the service where we take up communion. Now, I have the absolute privilege to introduce an amazing, awesome sister all the way from L.A. Uh, for the communion. Uh, her name is Sandra Smith. And uh, uh, she's been on quite the uh, adventure. She's been on a number of different trips, traveling around here and there. She's been on the uh, DC supplementary mission team. Sent to, then she was sent from there to DC to lead the West Women's Ministry in LA. Now she's here. And, but she's not staying here. Then she's going to the Warsaw ministry, the, the, um, oh, the, the, the uh, mission team in Warsaw to build God's church, God's kingdom in Poland. And that's what makes her awesome. So this is not her first rodeo, but her third, or maybe her fourth or fifth. And I believe in the many fruitful years to come, she will see her sacrifice, her hard work, um, grow into becoming her legacy. And her legacy will carry on forever. And that's really what all Christianity is about, really building God's ministry that lasts for eternity. Now, Sandra's asked me to read this incredible passage. I was just reading it. It's like, wow, this might actually become my favourite scripture. Uh, and that's Jonah 2, verses 1 to 6. It says, from inside the fish... Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hold me, hold me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the current swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head to the roots of the mountains. I sank down. The earth beneath me barred me in forever, but you, you brought me my life up from the pit, O oh Lord my God. Sandra Smith. Good morning, family. Um, bro, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so grateful to be here with you this morning and grateful to have the opportunity uh, to share what the cross means to me. I remember waking up hitting off my alarm clock and just feeling this pang of emptiness in my heart. Up until about three and a half years ago, this was the way I would wake up a lot of mornings. I did have many moments in life feeling full of love and excited for the day, uh, so let me backtrack a minute. Uh, I grew up in Iowa in a very loving home, and we had our trials, we had our challenges, but we loved hard and we got along really well. It was a very busy house, uh, two amazing parents, three awesome sisters, uh, our little female miniature schnauzer, muchacha. Uh, so we had a lot of estrogen in the home. We would do spa nights, weekly movie nights, we'd have a bike ride times and family vacations, and we went to church every Sunday. And when I was just 12 years old, uh, I made the choice that I was going to remain a virgin until marriage. And it's only by the grace of God that he's kept me on that path. After my high school graduation, I departed for college. I think that's what you call uni here. Uh, I had made the decision, I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to date. I'm going to be this good, faithful daughter of Christ. But the truth is, even with church, I rarely read the Bible and I hardly ever prayed. I would pray if I was hurting, but that was about it. While at college, I just, I started to feel this pang of emptiness, just a faint heartache. And it took me by surprise because I thought my life was on track. I was beginning a double major in biology and theater, and I had prepared my whole life to spread my wings and take off. 
but instead something just felt off. And the pain would go away at times. You know, I'd get busy with school, get busy with lab, get busy with acting and plays, and, and then life would calm down again, and then the sadness would just creep back in. I graduated senior of the year, I packed my bags and I moved to LA. And I started grad school at my dream school, the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And I went for my master's in theater, film, and television acting. And I thought to myself, this is what I've been waiting for. This is the thing that's gonna make me feel whole. This is it. But it wasn't it. I dated my first boyfriend in LA, but he didn't do the trick either. I graduated with honors. I moved to Australia and I vacationed in Fiji, Thailand, New Zealand, Bali, but none of it seemed to fill the hole. So I returned to LA, I started a great job, made great friends, and started drinking a lot, and had a summer just living it up. But it never seemed to fill me up. A year later, I landed a dream job, touring Southern California with a high talent theater company. And then I continued partying a lot, and drinking a lot, and idolizing men a lot all amidst going to church a lot, because that's what a faithful daughter of Christ does, right? On the outside, it looked like everything was great. I looked carefree, I looked sinless. People thought I had it all together, but not on the inside, not in my heart. On the inside, I was filled with sin and I was just hiding it really well. And then my lips spoke what my heart was full of. In the midst of another drunken night, I was impure with a married man. And what was even more sad, I didn't even feel guilty about it. I continued the relationship. I continued the reckless, selfish behavior the fullness of love I was feeling was full of deception. The relationship continued for two years. And I thought somehow I'm a good girl because I wouldn't have sex with him, so somehow that made it respectable. I was still going to church every Sunday and serving as a greeter, as a praise team member and head of the acting ministry. You know, I was being faithful to God for four hours every Sunday. The longer the affair went on, the more worthless I began to feel. I was cheating on God. I was cheating on the one I claimed to love. The initial excitement of the relationship, the love, faded and it faded fast. My unfaithfulness to God led a man to be unfaithful to his wife. And I started to feel a deep pain in my heart. I felt small and I started to feel tremendous guilt and disgust toward myself and toward him. And despite it all, God still reached out to me. He still called out for me. I remember one night after I had decided the relationship was over, this man showed up and I didn't have enough willpower to end it. And after years of taking pride in my self-control, I was spiraling out of control. The next morning, I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was just so angry. I felt so worthless and disgusting. I felt hopeless. And finally, on that morning, as I looked at myself in the mirror, I ended the affair. A couple months later, I went home to visit my family in Iowa. I go often. But this time, when I returned to LA, I felt different. My heart wasn't just hurting. It was ripped open and bleeding. And instead of just writing a gratitude list and numbing out like I normally do, something inside me shifted. Something just said, Sandra, listen. And I ended up crying a lot. And I prayed a lot. And I finally gave up. I told God that day, I said, I'm done. I'm done controlling my life. I'm done trying to micromanage everything. I got the life I thought I wanted and it's not enough. Your turn. I said to God, if you want me back in Iowa, I'll go. 
Or if you want me to stay here in LA, I'll stay. Wherever you want me, just tell me and I'll obey. I spent the next uh, two weeks just super fragile. I felt like glass, like anything could break me. And I cried and I prayed and I read the Bible for those weeks. And despite my years of unfaithfulness to God, he remained faithful. And at the end of those two weeks, he spoke to me for the first time that I can remember. And he told me, you are where you're supposed to be. If you go home to Iowa, you're not going for love, you're going out of fear. So I said, okay, God, I'll stay. And then I just started praying to God for him to surround me with a group of real Christians. I had been going to church regularly for four years leading up to this moment, but I knew, I just knew deep down that something was missing. I'm like, something is off. And without me even asking, friends just start inviting me out to church, and I said yes to it all. I church hopped for three months, and all the churches seemed totally great, but there was still something off. I needed more. And then one afternoon, a close coworker friend of mine, her name is Marisha Legan Johnson, she invited me to Bible talk, which is a casual midweek Bible-based gathering, and I went, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at first, because it didn't feel like my crowd. And I decided in my mind I won't be back. But God humbled me quick. He revealed there was so much pride in my heart. Pride that I didn't even know I had. I didn't even know pride was a sin. And he just started to reveal his plan for me. And after jumping into the most intense, incredible Bible studies, incredible Bible studies that I've ever been a part of, God showed me how much he loved me and what his actual plan was for my life. And it changed everything. As I went through the Bible studies, there were struggles, like major struggles, and many questions and debates, and I wrestled through those studies because what I had to face head on, I wasn't a true Christian because I wasn't obeying the Bible. I wasn't even trying to obey the Bible. And the more I studied it, the more I saw the Bible is the undeniable truth. And I finally... I finally committed all my heart to God. And on September 16th, 2018, I was baptized for the forgiveness of my sins and saved. He created a fullness in me I was so desperate for. A fullness that I no longer thought was possible. A fullness in my heart like I've never experienced in my life. I finally got the cure. I got the cure to the cancer that was eating my heart away. And I still have challenging days. I still have to repent every day, ask Michelle. But the difference is I have God now. I have hope. So no matter how deep the pain is, I know he will never fail me. There's one who loves me and who fills my heart. The one that I can have uninhibited faith in. The hole in my heart, it's gone. I don't have the question mark anymore. I don't have the empty feeling because I have my father and he's worth everything. God is faithful. Even when I was buried in sin, he was patient enough to lead me to the truth. And when I couldn't forgive myself, he said, I can. And I know hard days aren't over, but I'm committed to being a faithful daughter of Christ. So as I stand before you now, the cross means to me second chances. Thanks for letting me share.